Hello everyone, I'm Tracy Banter of Banter's Arc Force. Today's video is going to be about, again, putting this wilding machine back together, the 300 DLX. I know it's a little bit time consuming of watching these videos, but there's probably somebody out there that's nervous about working on their machine, and I want to help them feel confident about it, whether they have to resource someone else doing some of the work or doing it for themselves. Today's machines are not cheap. Uh, I know you can get a smaller version of this. This is considered medium duty. In between medium duty and heavy duty, the 300 DLX, 300 amps. You can only get a 250 amp in this today. And I'm not 100% sure. They're probably around six or $7,000. But to replace this one that built like it is today we're talking in the neighborhood of 20 grand um and i don't want to spend that kind of money this machine does ac which it has a, a high frequency box i can put up to it hook up to it i mean and you can uh heliarch aluminum with it and you, you can do MIG welding, and if you set it up right, you can do carbon steel, stainless steel, or aluminum. And it does DC reverse polarity and straight polarity for stick welding. So, I hope this video is helpful. There's going to be, I believe, at least one more that is going to finish the video of rebuilding the machine. I can't wait to start using it again. It is running again right now, though. I'm just doing a little paint work to it. It's running. Can't wait to start using it. And I could hear a tick in it that I didn't like when it was running. And I took the bearing out of the armature. Now that was down in there. Down in that piece way down there. You can see that open spot right there where the armature sets up in there took it off of the armature this is your armature and this is your stator the outside windings is your stator and that's the armature I'm no real good electrician but I have worked on this thing several times about 10 years ago I started having a little bit of trouble with it back in the mid 2000 aught years and uh, it had a flaw. The bearing that was in them had what's called an, a wafer ring that goes around. It slips in there first and then the bearing goes in, in, in it on that shaft right there. It bottoms out right there but it goes on there. And We decided, I decided, and I was told to put a different bearing on it. This is the tolerance ring to the bearing. And it would set inside the frame. You would squeeze this and let it out. And it couldn't go forward and backwards. It had a groove in there. And this bearing would ride around on the inside of this tolerance ring or wear ring and what was happening is those stamped areas of that wear ring would start to flatten on the inside where the bearing is rotating actually is rotating in here but it would ride and kind of spin a little bit if it wanted to in here and it would just wear that out and if it gets to vibrating too much it will short out your machine. And it's very expensive to get all those parts and electrician work to do all that. So what happened is the first time it got repaired because it was under three years of use and under a certain amount of hours. And um, the second time it happened, uh, I had to do something on my own decision and I caught it before it went bad and lim doing damage to the panel the PC panel so 
took it to the machine shop, eliminated this piece. It's gone. And the frame that held that piece got milled out so that there was like a race. It's a little bit thicker. You'll see it coming up in this video. And it's pressed in there just right. And this bearing, this, this is the older bearing, but the new one is the same bearing. And it presses in onto the shaft and in the center of that uh, race tolerance ring that has been modified to the welding machine. And you'll see some more video of it. I'm getting ready to show it right now of uh, what I did. First thing I did to this armature and the stators, I took an air chuck nozzle, high pressure air, no water, and cleaned out them cooling fins on the stator and the armature. There was mud in there, dirt, leaves. It's got to be clean so that the machine can get itself cooled down when it's running. Okay, I'm getting ready to show you an area where the wear ring was replaced. The machine shop had milled this area right here out and made a sleeve. And this sleeve, I pressed it into place, replacing the wear ring. Cleaned this all off and checked it and the wiring is all good. The uh, the armature needs cleaned. We can do that after we get running again. But I want to check all these threads. Um, make sure there's no gouges in it, no rust, no dirt. What I meant by cleaning the armature, there's a brass area down there at the bottom where the flange hooks up to the hub drive. That brass area right there. There's brushes that touch that that's where the electric comes from there's a stone that you use when it's rotating and it's running and it cleans that area slide it in there it goes in a little bit further than that what's in there you can see it right there. It's starting to come through. We got a light on it. It's starting to come through. We'll push that in a little bit more. And probably actually could get it in place. But it, it needs to be held on the back side. It needs to be held, held up so you can drive that um, bearing on there. Let's slide that in there. Let's try. Close. Yeah, you can see that shiny spot there on the shaft. Let me get my light right here. You can see that shiny spot right there. That's where the, the bearing is going to ride on that right there but it's gonna insert over this. Then there's a space in there because by the time you thread that fan on, that gap right there is the gap it's gonna have between here and this metal. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna check the front pulley, harmonic balancer, making sure I did not loosen it when I broke the the bolts off that flywheel. So I've stuck that in there like that. And now I'm going to torque down on that flange bolt for the harmonic balancer. Okay, everything was great on the harmonic balancer. That pulley that bolts to the front of the crankshaft now i'm getting ready to line it up to the armature that flex plate goes to that hub drive the flywheel and i got the armature so that the the largest area of it 
it's kind of oblong looking shape is up and down and now i'm getting ready to line it up with the pulley there's a weight on that crankshaft pulley if you can see the weight on that pulley is on top if i get this just right there's a weight right here it's up on top and it goes all the way to the other side and when I found this thing years ago, the armature, I can't, you can't see it right now. The armature's got a flat spot in it on both sides. I don't know if you can see it. See how it's flat? And then it's curved at the top and at the bottom. And... I when I found it years ago, this 15 plus years ago, tore it apart. That was uh, the curved part was on top, and the weight on the on the pulley of the harmonic balancer was on top as well. So I want to line that up like that. Now, if you can see this or not. The shaft um, there's a like a thrust washer in there and that when I get ready to press that bearing in there it's going to seat right up against that at this time I decided to speed the video up a little bit all I'm doing is bolting up the engine bell housing to the frame of the welding component the outside stator and the armature is not bolted up yet it's not in the engine is not in the motor mount location it's loose as you can see it's back a little bit from the entire welding frame i need to put the bearing in place eventually so just bolting everything up loosely right now and uh, check and make sure everything lines up okay at this point the engine is not in the motor mount location but the armature is bolted to the hub drive everything's in sequence location so that it is balanced the weight on the hub of the pulley harmonic balancer and the armature so that everything lines up now i'm getting ready to press the bearing in place and it takes a little bit of time Still. It's going. There ain't much room to swing that hammer. What I've got here is, is it perfectly fits over that shaft. It'll it'll clear it. But I'm hitting the race at the bottom and I'm hitting the outer uh, of the bearing. So I'm hitting everything all at once. So don't put any stress on them ball bearings. Still got some more to go. I'm sure at this time everybody's wondering why didn't I take this frame out of the way so that I could have more room. Well the wiring goes to the panel and it also goes to that outside winding the stator i have had it apart years ago and i didn't want to do it again so that's why i left it where it's at but 
it's pretty close to flush right now real close I'd like to get another sixty fourth of an inch or something. Oh yeah, it's in there. You can see that. There's two washers that fit right up against that bearing on the lower part of the bearing race. And they're pressed on, they're tight. And I got a rubber ring where it's flush so that this that was original is ground down and then it fits over that rubber ring so that it won't move and now all I need to do now is spin this fan on make sure it's clean look like a leaf or something this goes on just clockwise There it goes. <clears throat> That's going to bottom out on that. Now I'm holding on to it the other side with the onto the crankshaft. Don't want to break it, but get it on there tight. If the motor's spinning clockwise, anyways, yeah. So on the back side here, it torques it. I ain't gonna go no more. I don't want to strip threads. That's plenty. I have no idea how many foot pounds it is, but it's you know spinning in the direction that it can't fly off, and it's up against that washer. <clears throat> so that's all I got to do now. It's on, and the shaft is there's there's no more. There might be a half a thread. That's it. I don't want to go anymore because I don't want to strip. That's tight. <clears throat> Strip threads on that. It's just plastic. You'd thought that they would have put a metal insert in it, but no. So now all I got to do is lift this up. So now all I got to do is is chain hoist uh, everything up, get all the blocks out from underneath it that it's sitting on, and slide it in place and drop it down onto its rubber grommets and anchor it down and then start plugging everything in.